What's up guys? Let's take your video lighting from this to this. Now I'm a firm believer in it's not all about the camera. Yes, the camera is important, but more importantly, how you light your scene is even more important. You can have the best camera in the world, and if your lighting sucks, the whole image is gonna suck. If you have a cheap camera and you have incredible lighting, no one's gonna know the difference between a high-end camera or a low-end camera. So adding in just a little bit of lighting here and there can really spruce up a video or a photo shoot or some product photography that you may be working on. So I'm gonna show you how I set up my interview lights and what I use. So I'm gonna go over the lights that I typically use for say an interview setup. Right now this is the Aperture 300D Mark I and I have a MagMod softbox attached to it just to add a little interest into the back and it it looks really cool. It's a nice hair light, right? Around me, I've got three of the Amaran lights from Aperture. They're all diffused, and the one directly behind me has a color gel. Now, I'm not using any room lights at the moment. I'm not using any of the, the tungsten colored lights in the room. So I have this really big window directly in front of me, right behind the camera. But I have the shade down so that I can control the light. Because if you're using just natural light, you can have clouds come over, your exposure changes throughout the day. It changes minute by minute, actually. You know, if a cloud flies over, or a plane flies over directly between you and the sun and it casts a big shadow of where you're filming. So controlling the light is always preferable to me. Now, I know this is a lot of money. This is a ton of money in lighting. So we're going to try to find some ways to help you out and not spend quite as much money or zero money on your next lighting setup. So first, let's go ahead and turn off all the lights. This is what it looks like with no lights, just the window light that's in front of me and a little bit of bleed coming through the shades. Behind me, I've got this kicker light. <clears throat> this one is just adding a bit of color, a bit of mood, a bit of interest to the shot so that it's not just a stale, perfectly lit up shot. Next one, I have this kicker right behind me. It's helping cut me out from the background. It's helping to give me a little bit of a rim light right here across my head. Next light, I've got this sort of a hair light. It's kind of filling in the shadows on this side of my face. More of a hair light, really. And then I have my main key light that's lighting up my face. Now, if you wanted to go for more of a moody look, you could turn off one of the side lights and give you more of a moody feel. You know, more shadows on one side than the other gives more of a contrast feel to your image. So adding color to a scene with gels can change the mood and the feel of what you are shooting. For instance, putting red up can make a scene feel very moody, very dangerous, very tense. So when you have colors like red and orange and it, it can add some tension to your shot, it can really drive home that there's something wrong with your main character or your subject that's in frame. Now while colors like teal and blues and purples can also give a, a feeling of hope and inspiration, they also can give off a feeling of being calm and being very centered. So I'll, a lot of the times I like to use these colors, purples, blues, light greens, teals, like that, for my interview setups. Now I know not everybody can afford a lighting setup like this, but I didn't buy it all at once. I pieced it together, you know, I'd get money from a job, I'd buy a piece of kit. I got some more money from a job, bought another piece of kit. It's acquired over time. Not all of this stuff was purchased in the same day. So with a small budget, let's try to figure out what you can do to improve your lighting setup. So one of the cheapest things that you can purchase to improve your lighting is one of these five-in-one deflectors. It has a silver side, it has a mixed silver and gold side, it's got a gold side and then a full white side. So you can use the silver side to add a pop of light to your subject. You know, it's way too much, but you get the point. You can reflect sunlight back 
into your subject. And you wouldn't want to generally, you know, light them from below, but you get the point. So you have a mixed side if you need to warm it up just a little bit. And on the inside, you've got this gold. So also on the inside, you have some diffusion. You know, it's somewhat transparent so that you can use it to soften your light. If you're using like a like sunlight or a kind of a harsh light, you use this to diffuse your light and it looks a lot better. So if you're using direct sunlight, you see how harsh this is? This is really just kind of gross. It doesn't work at all. So using the diffuser right in front of your subject can help diffuse the light and make it a lot softer. Now those diffusers, they're not very much. They're probably $30, $40 for a bigger one. You can get them on Amazon. You can get them at your local photography store. You can get them just about anywhere. So if you don't want to sit there and hold this over your head the entire time while you're filming and look like a goof, so go ahead and throw your diffuser up on a light stand or have a friend hold it for you and you have this really nice soft diffused light over your subject. So I hope you take away a lot from this video about how to light up a video or even photography for that matter. Now these lights probably wouldn't work for photography because they're not bright enough, but for video they're perfect. So if you got something out of this video, go ahead and hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, tell your friends, tell your mom, tell your dog, tell everybody. Have them subscribe too because it helps me out a ton. And I'll see you next time.